planet Earth. By the year 2050, the world's population will have reached 9.3 billion people. Clean water, sources of energy, sufficient food, all will become increasingly scarce. Even the space we need to live our lives, the very environment that sustains us, will be under unprecedented pressure. Where can we turn for solutions to these seemingly insurmountable challenges? Join us as we meet a new generation of visionaries who are intent on the human race flourishing. Water, one of the elemental building blocks of life. For many of the world's inhabitants, securing access to clean water is increasingly difficult. Worldwide, there are nearly one billion people without access to safe water. These numbers are staggering now. Imagine the problem we'll face in the coming years. In 1981, a chemist in Guatemala developed a low-cost way to filter water using traditional potting methods and locally available materials. This innovation would eventually find its way around the world, bringing clean water to millions of people. More than 30 years later, this incredible discovery has become the focal point of a non-profit organization's efforts to make this open-source technology freely available to communities around the world. My name is Bert Cohen. I'm a potter by trade. I work with the organization Potters Without Borders. We make filters that make clean water with low-cost ceramic water filters. In many countries, only a very small percentage of the population actually have access to clean water. This particular process was started with the assistance of Fernando Marciego, who is a Guatemalan chemist. He had supposed that they could use traditional potters to hand form ceramic water filters to put in the hands of at-risk communities a technology to be able to create their own safe water. The filters are made from a simple mix of clay and sawdust. We form cast the filters in between uh, aluminum molds. They're fired and they come out of the kiln. And it leaves very fine pore structures that are small enough to prevent bacteria from flowing through. These ceramic filters are being used in 14 different countries and can produce about 2.5 liters of clean water per hour. As the water passes through the filter, contaminants are trapped by the micropores. Field experience and clinical test results have shown this filter to remove approximately 99.88% of waterborne disease agents. We have worked to develop a, an open source model that can be disseminated around the world. As a team or as an individual, we will go into the community, train the initial cadre of workers. A month later, the, that community is producing their own filters. Water shortages are not simply an issue in rural or developing parts of the world. Industrial misuse and mismanagement contributes to this problem on an entirely different scale. In the US alone, approximately 40% of the nation's lakes and rivers are too polluted for use as drinking water. Worldwide, industry accounts for an estimated 20% of water use, much of which is left unfit for human consumption. A few years ago, while traveling in Japan, an American scientist and inventor saw something that inspired him a building that incorporated a coating that actually broke down dirt and airborne contaminants. 
This moment of inspiration led to the development of a radical new way to remove contaminants from water by combining nanotechnology and the power of the sun. My name is Mark Owen, and I am the founder and CEO of Pyrolytics. We have developed a new way to purify water. The problem with the, in the world today is you know, all the water treatment systems that we have are really mimicking naturally occurring processes in nature. You know, soil filters water, sunlight causes it to evaporate. The problem is over the last 50 years, we've developed industrial chemicals that didn't exist any time in the history of the world. The industry says the solution to pollution is dilution. And so if you have a contaminated stream, you add a lot of clean water to it until it's down to it's dilute enough that those contaminants are not of concern to the environment. Pyrolytics technology uses a nanotechnology coated mesh that when it's excited by light causes contaminants in the water to be attracted to the surface and then break apart from the energy of the light. Contaminants are completely destroyed uh, in the process. We have a very simple test. We can put food coloring in there. Food coloring is a very complicated chemical. It's a very visible, um, simple way to, to check it. As impure water enters the shield, it passes over the catalyst-coated mesh. Powerful ultraviolet LED lights activate the nano-coating, breaking down any chemical compounds, as well as trapping any heavy metals. This revolutionary process actually destroys contaminants, rather than trapping them or treating them with chemical additives. By treating the contaminants at the point of of source. We don't need to add all of this uh, water to dilute it. We don't need to pollute any of the downstream processes. What I see in the future is people will want to take water under their own control. Increasingly, I think you'll see decentralized solutions to water. Once it becomes simple enough that someone can do, once it becomes cheap enough that someone can do, they may choose to treat the rainwater that falls in their house. They may choose to further treat the drinking water that comes into their house. People have to have clean water and choices that uh, allow them to have as clean a water as they need. I'd like to see uh, the, these filters made in every country that has at-risk populations. What we are doing is to develop a technology that is responsive and that is changing. As soon as people understand what it does, you could not take it away from them. This is part of the future of water, not the whole solution, certainly, but it's part of the future and I think we can have hope. The power of human ingenuity has already ushered in a new age of technological advancement and prosperity. By deciding to face the challenges of the coming decades head-on, every one of us can participate in securing the future of planet Earth. Whether it's by reapplying existing technologies in surprising ways, or by developing radical new solutions, there is hope. Join us next time as we meet more visionaries who are rising to the challenge of 9.3.